Let's uh, continue our discussion on designing database applications. So uh, we've talked about a database. Uh, this is something that maintains information about various types of objects, such as inventory events, like transactions, sales transactions, uh, people, uh, like employees, and places like warehouses. Uh, a database management system is software uh, in which users and application programs interact with a database. And the relational database model is a type of database that stores information in the form of logically related two-dimensional tables. A data model is a formal way to express data relationships. The underlying relationships uh, are independent of the vendor's database that's being used. <clears throat> So an entity relationship diagram is a technique for documenting the relationships between uh, entities in the database environment. <clears throat> now an entity is something that's also known as a, a table, is a person, place, thing, or transaction about which information is stored. Uh, attributes are called fields or columns, and their characteristics or properties of an entity class. And we also discuss the need for identifiers. An entity identifier ensures that each entity row or record <clears throat> has a unique attribute value that distinguishes it from every other record. And that way you can pull that exact record. You can pull my record uh, out of the customer database exactly. You don't get 50 records that you have to sort through. The, this uh, entity identifier is also referred to as a primary key. An entity identifier ensures that each entity has a unique attribute value that distinguishes it from every other entity. <coughs> Um, the relationships uh, that are stored in a database are between instances of entities. So they're between individual records. And there's three basic types, one-to-one, one-to-many, and a many-to-many. -many. Cardinality expresses the specific number of entity occurrences associated with one occurrence of the related table. So in a one-to-one -one relationship, one entity in the first table is related to one entity in the second table. And likewise, each entity in the second table is related to only one entity in the first table. And here we notice that we have uh, Chen's uh, notation, rectangles representing entities, and diamonds representing <clears throat> a relationship. Here's a one-to-many, and again, we see the Chen method uses diamonds for relationships and lines that show the type of relationship between the entities. So in this case, one customer can have many orders with our company, but any particular order in our company will only be related to one customer. So that's a one-to-many relationship. In a many-to-many -many relationship, one instance of the table of the first table can be related to many instances of the second. And likewise, um, <clears throat> one instant of the second can be uh, related to many instances of the first. So if we have a relationship, a many to many relationship between customers and products, one customer 
may have ordered many products and one product may have been ordered by many different customers. That is a many to many relationship. Now, relational databases do not handle many to many relationships. So what we have to do is break a many to many relationship into several one to many relationships. <clears throat> To do this, we use what is known as a composite entity or also known as an association table. This is a table that exists to represent the relationship between two other tables. So as an example, um, we've got a many-to-many -many relationship uh, between um, uh, orders and uh, products. Uh, one order can have many products on it, and one product can be ordered by many different uh, <clears throat> orders. So we can put in an association table, also known as a composite entity, between them. So between order and product, we put in a, another table, a composite entity or an association table called order line. So one order has many lines on it, each line having one product. And likewise, one product can be on many different order lines. Going in the reverse direction, one order line is only about one order. And likewise, one order line is only about one product. So in the, what we had had before, a many-to-many -many relationship between order and product, now is composed of two one-to-many relationships. <clears throat> and a relational database can handle this type of situation. <clears throat> a schema is a roadmap showing the entities and relationships and it lets programmers and database analysts see at a quick glance what uh, the database is composed of. Here's a schema for a university uh, database. <clears throat> and this uses the Martin Information Engineering notation. Um, and you'll note we still have rectangles for the entities, but we put their attributes uh, listed below the entity. And we have lines connecting between them showing uh, relationships. So there's a relationship between students and departments and instructors and departments, students and sections that are offered of courses, the students take or register for a section the instructor teaches a section because a section, uh, the relationship between a course section and student is many to many. And likewise, the relationship between a course section and an instructor is many to many. So we put a table in between them and then we have, we replace the many to many with two one to many relationships. So when we get our entity relationship modeling finished, we then want to translate it into actual tables in the database. <clears throat> and of course, most database management systems uh, today are based on the relational model, although there's a growing number based on the NoSQL model. <clears throat> so, uh, the word table is used synonymously with entity and also relation. And what this is doing, uh, the, def the definition of a, uh, an entity or a, a table is it's just the structure. It does not include the data. When rows of data are included, then you have what's known as an instance of the table. <clears throat> so a row is a particular 
example of the uh, entity you're looking at. So if your entity is an instructor, a row would be all the information we have about George Ray or all the information we have about Ben Marks. So the rows are the actual um, entities that are in the entity set. The columns um, are going to be the attributes that we want to capture information about. Again, we have an identity, an entity identifier, also known as a primary key, and that makes us able to go to an exact record. It makes it enables us to go to George Ray in the instructor table. So it has to be unique in every record. So no record will have a duplicate identifier. And that way we know exactly what record to go to to get to a particular uh, entity that we're interested in. And here we see um, the use of customer number as a primary key in the customer table. Order table, order number is the primary key, but because we have a relationship between customers and orders, in other words, a customer will make orders, we keep the customer number as part of our uh, attributes for the order table. That way we can find the orders that a particular customer has made. This is known as a foreign key. Customer number in the order table is a foreign key. Customer number in the customer table is the primary key. When we get a particular customer, we can take their primary key, read all the records in the order table that have that as a foreign key. And that'll give us the records that uh, the orders that a customer has made. <clears throat> so this foreign key is a primary key of one table that appears as an attribute in another file or table. And it en enables a logical connection between the two tables. We can get the records in the uh, one table that are related to the record in the other table. So we can get the orders in the order table that are related to a particular customer in the customer table. A referential integrity is that um, a foreign key value must match an existing primary key value. So we would not want to put into the order table records with a customer number where that customer number did not exist in the customer table, because then we'd have orders that we would never match up on. And of course, that would be uh, a prime condition for something like fraud. Uh, data dictionaries uh, store definitions of the information types that we hold of primary and foreign keys. And this information is stored in what's known as the databases catalog. Um, some of the information that's held in a data dictionary, the definitions of the columns, the domains they have, for example, salary must be an integer between 20,000 and 100,000. The integrity constraints placed on relations. In other words, um, we must have uh, a, an existing value in customer number uh, for an order where we put a customer number for the person making that particular order. And then security information. Who is allowed to access this information? Who's allowed to update it and things of that nature? So the correct design for a specific business is gonna depend on the business rules. These are other integrity constraints. And it could be something like a student isn't allowed to uh, take more than 18 semester hours in a semester. 
So what is correct for one organization may not be correct for another. Um, but it's easy for you to put your rules into this database. Normalization is a way we can make sure that we have a good database design. And there are several ways of doing it. One is uh, we can work from the uh, entity relationship diagram. We've, in an entity relationship modeling exercise, we've done a pretty good job of getting the database in a, a normal form. And so we can just polish that up. Another approach is to use um, functional dependencies. And uh, either one is, is a good starting point. Uh, there's normal forms. And that means that you're going to go from a normal form that is basic to higher levels of your normal form that are much more exact. <clears throat> So the most basic normal form is the first normal form. <clears throat> there can still be uh, a, a lot of problems with it, but it does give you a basic re uh, relational uh, database table. You can then improve it by going to second normal form. And that removes some uh, other errors that we might run into then once you're in second normal form, you can get into third normal form. And again, that removes even more errors. And you can even go up to these higher levels that you see here. Normally, businesses will stop at the third normal form. They don't spend the extra effort to get to these higher normal forms because when you get to these higher normal forms, they can have a tremendous Ne a tremendously negative impact on your performance, your database's performance. So a little a rhyme that you can use to remember how to get into third normal form is every attribute is determined by the key, the whole key, and nothing but the key. So let's see how that works in the first three normal forms. So in the first normal form, we're um, going to have our data in a tabular format. Um, we're not going to have any multi-valued attributes like phone. And we have a primary key. So this is the first normal form. Every attribute is determined by the key. So that in this case, we've got first normal form because we've put in a primary key. <clears throat> in situations where the primary key is composed of multiple attributes, then we can add the second part. Every attribute is determined by the key. And here comes the second part, the whole key. So we want to make sure that it's not dependent on only part of a composite key. <clears throat> so when it is dependent on only a portion of the uh, primary key, then it's violating second normal forms. And the classic example for demonstrating this is the part warehouse example. So here you'll note uh, we have a table its primary key is composed of two attributes, part and warehouse. Combined, part and warehouse uniquely identify a row in the table. And that row can give us the quantity of that part in that warehouse, and it will also give us the warehouse address. But note, the attribute warehouse address is determined only by warehouse. That's only part of the key. It's not influenced at all by the part. So such a partial key dependency violates second normal form. So there's several issues with that. Uh, every part in the warehouse repeats the warehouse address. 
So what if the warehouse address changes? Also, there's no place to keep the warehouse address if there's no parts in the warehouse. So we may have temporarily closed the warehouse and moved our inventory somewhere else, but we didn't just uh, give it away. It's still on our books, but in the database, it disappears if we don't have any parts. So that's another problem with this. So what we do, a better design, is to split that table with the violation into two tables. The first table has the part warehouse key, and then the quantity, which is dependent on both. We take the warehouse as a separate key, and we move the attributes that was only dependent on the warehouse as the attribute in that table. Third normal form is when we have no transitive dependencies. In other words, this is where we add in the third part. So the, every attribute is dependent on the key, the whole key, and for third normal form, and nothing but the key. So another, an attribute cannot be determined by another attribute. It can only be uniquely identified by the <clears throat> key itself. So let's consider a college and let's say that every campus is in one city. So we have an, an employee table and we have the employee ID, the campus that the employee works at and the city uh, where the employee works at. So this, the campus's city is um, repeated for uh, all the employees in there. So campus determines city as much as employee ID. <clears throat> so again, we have risks of redundancy, uh, duplicated re uh, redundancy data. And um, if, if we try and change the location of a campus, we run into problems. To solve this, we do the same thing we decompose it into two tables. The first table is the employee table and we have the employee ID and the field that's de determined by that campus. Then we have the campus table and campus is the ID there and we have the attribute determined by uh, campus. <clears throat> So um, we, once we've normalized our uh, database, um, what we've done is we've created many new tables. And then in order to get information that sometimes, let's say we want to get the, uh, you know, we want the employee's campus and city. Well, when it was in a, lower normal, uh, normal form, we could get that with one read. We just go to the employee table and read their record and it was right there. But since we've made it a better design by splitting it into two tables, now we have to do some extra work. We have to join the employee table and the campus table. So that slows down the database operation. <clears throat> And a join, again, is going to take two tables that are related, and it lets you join them together so that the related records are matched with each other. <clears throat> but that's extra work that the database engine has to do, and that can slow down performance. And that's why um, a lot of times organizations will not even go to the third normal form they back off a little bit because of database performance. <clears throat> okay, let's take a look at this problem. Go ahead, read this problem, uh, spend about uh, 15 minutes uh, working it out, come up with an entity relationship diagram for this. Okay, let's take a look at this. I'm going to highlight some things in red. So as we read through our uh, database problem, 
we want to be cognizant of major nouns like courses, department, instructor, section. These nouns are possibly entities in our table. Then we want to look for attributes, which are not standalone nouns, but nouns that are related to one of these major nouns. So for example, the instructor's information is their ID number, name, office location, and phone number. So these are nouns, but they're related to instructor. So these become attributes. And likewise, we have course ID. So we've got courses, major uh, entity, and then what do we want to keep information about the course? ID, title, credit hours. And same with section and same with student. You know, so we want to track the student's ID number, name, phone number, and the grade uh, a student receives in each course. So we keep track of the major entities and the attributes, and we can put them in tables. So here are those major tables. And just in reading through the problem, we can infer relationships. An instructor teaches sections of a course. A student enrolls into sections in a course. And a course will have sections. <clears throat> so, um, this case, uh, we've got, we've identified our entities, our attributes, and our relations. Another view might be like this, <clears throat> where we have student and section, instructor and section, and then a course and section. Okay, any questions? <clears throat> 